Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Happily Ever After, etc. And I'm back with another home project. But this obviously is not my house, so you may recognize it. I've been here many times. We've filmed in here many times. This is my mom's house. Say hi, mom. Hey, how are you? Mom's very excited. Yeah. So what are we doing today, mom? We are going to paint this room. We're going to paint the living room. So this is gold paint. with all the stuff marks. How long has this been here? It's been like this since before you bought the house. Yeah, I bought the house 10 years ago. So we don't know if it's 10 years old or if it's 20 years old, but it is old and it needs repainted. She has a great couch and this green chair that was my great grandma's. It may or may not ever be recovered. We're not sure. We haven't decided. This chair, she does want to get recovered, but most of the room is blues and greens. Um, she has this blue table. She has a little bit of reds, very traditional colors. Um, we're going to be repainting this mantle, she thinks. Mm -hmm. yes. This is an antique mantle that you found, right? Yes, it is. You found it at what, an antique shop or something? Yeah, at an antique store and a yeah. chair, except for this chair. Every, really, all the tables and chairs, everything came from. Even the couch came from an, an antique store. store. It's not an antique. They were just selling it, but it was from an antique store. So, yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Yeah, it was in the back in a consignment type area, but it was an antique store. So we're going to be painting today. We're going to be painting um, a sea foam kind of color, which is a nice neutral. It goes green, it goes blue, it goes gray. It is actually the color I have in my living room behind my couch as an accent wall. So we think it's going to go with all of her colors in here and give her a nice neutral base with a little bit of color to go with all of her other colors. You can't tell right now, She's taken them all down, but she has a lot of pictures and wall art in here. Most of it's things she's collected over the years from different places we've lived because we were military for a very long time, or places she's traveled because mom's always going somewhere. So we're going to be painting. Wagner sent me a nifty new paint rolling contraption. I don't even know what to call it. We're going to have to look that up because I'm sure it has a fancy name. Um, but it's supposed to be really easy. We're going to tape everything today, move everything out of the way, lock the puppy up, and then we're going to paint this room. So I guess we'll leave it. Daisy's going to help. Daisy, Daisy, Daisy. Yeah. I have dachshund. You should see mom's. I have this. five. She you has have five, and I have five. So there you go. I have one York, so you still have one more dachshund than I do. We're going to get started by just, uh, mom's already moved most of the little stuff and the wall stuff out, but we're going to move all the big stuff to the middle, the rest of the little stuff out. Yeah. Take a few nail pieces out, we're going to tape, we're going to do a lot of prep work when you're painting. No matter how good your paint is, no matter how good your paint is or how good your tools are, prep work is the most important thing you can do to make sure your room looks and performs properly for the next 10 years. Mom wants me to point out that she has had a really cool idea for the trim. Um, I don't think you can tell from this angle, but I will show you. She has really beefy baseboards. This house is over 100 years old and it has all original molding. Um, and so around the doors, you can see the baseboards are all really beefy. Um, and then the molding up top, despite the corners board being big, it's not dinky, but it's just smaller, and they she wants, they did, they have, what, nine foot Twelve. Seven, 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 seven. Which I don't understand at all why you would ever do that, but maybe they were trying to keep more heat in because these houses could get really cold, and especially, I mean, she has, what, one, two, like, four chimneys in this house? Three chimneys. Three chimneys. Three chimneys. Six fireplaces. Yeah, because they were double-sided. Like this right here, which has been boxed in, yes. is actually a fireplace. The that fireplace is behind all brick behind there. And if it was in any shape that was worth exposing, it might be worth it. But it is. I don't know. We don't think it is because the other couple don't seem to be. You'd have to mm -hmm. knock a hole in the wall. I know. Can you knock a hole in there? Not right now. Anyways, I don't know what I was saying. The fireplaces. 
Um, we're going to figure it out. That's crazy. So we're going to add this mantle and then the, oh, that's what I was saying. It was, it was cold in the house. They had a lot of fireplaces, but they still dropped the ceiling because it was cold. And so mom wants to add another piece of molding a couple inches under this one and then paint the space in between to make it look bigger and beefier like the baseboards. So probably won't do that today, but maybe soon. After we paint. After we paint. Oh, sorry, buddy. I'm sorry. All right, let's get started. Where's the baby? Behind me. He just, he likes to be by my feet. Okay, he was actually locked up behind the gate, but it was too late when we got down. All right, so now that we've prepped the wall, we've taken all the nails out and we've wiped them down. Mom is starting to tape the edges. We are going to tape off all the bottom molding and the molding around the doors. There are a lot of doors in this room. There are literally four doors. So winner, winner. Luckily, mom did point out that since we are going to beef up the top molding and add a little stripe of paint and then new molding up there, we do not need to tape off the top molding because we are going to be painting up there so we can just paint close to the molding and call that a day so i'm going to go ahead and tape all of the bottom molding and around the doors and then we will be ready to start painting yep she took all the nail heads off and um, little hooks and everything so the walls on this side are good to go And she took the plate cover off, so that makes that really easy. We don't need to paint right up to the plate cover. We can just paint to the edge of the wall. All right, y'all. So I went and I got my contraption from Wagner that they sent me. It is called the Wagner Easy Roller Paint Stick. I knew it had a fancy name. So, as you can see, it is essentially a big fancy roller with a handle, which is nice because we have tall ceilings. And the way that it works is it has a little nozzle that you can use to fill up the handle here, right from your paint can. And then you have all your paint in the handle and you're supposed to not have to use a big tray and get paint everywhere, you're supposed to be able to use this. So obviously we do still have a few brushes for cutting in, but other than that, we are going to give this a try. I think it's going to make painting this room so much easier. I'm really excited about it. We painted, um, painted mom's bathroom. I don't, know, I don't know if I did a video, but I definitely did a post a couple years ago says you can paint an eight by 10 wall in one fill. That's exciting. All right, we're gonna test that. We have an eight by 10 wall in here. I don't know how big this wall is. It's a big wall. It's very well packaged. Very strong. <laughs> got paint in the handle faster than a manual roller two times faster extended reach for ceilings no tray less mess all of which I need in my life especially the, the less mess and the faster part what I was saying was we painted mom's bathroom a couple like a year ago the ceilings, so long to paint. This would have been very nice to have. Okay, so 
got some instructions. We're going to try reading them. So, quick start guide. You put this guy, looks like right this way with the big part, that makes sense, the big tube down into the paint can. You clip this on it. And then you can put this part here right over it. Not sure, maybe I have to. play with it once it's put together but yeah put it right down like that it's really suctiony so don't tip over your paint can but it does fit in there and then apparently suck it right up okay yeah so it says pull plunger to fill the tube squeeze trigger and begin so this apparently pulls. I have to do something special. You guys are seeing me figure this out with you, so like I have no prior training. Oh yeah, there we go. Squeeze and begin. So when you do this, it's gonna squirt your paint out into the tube. Okay, so this goes on our paint can. Now, this guy is going to have to go in here and it looks like there's a little clip. So I'm assuming we put this down snug, snug, snug. And then that clips right over this little notch here. So I think we're good to go. This way. I'm going to go ahead, sweep the room. Put down a drop cloth over all the furniture, grab my paint can, and we're going to take this gold to sea salt, not sea foam. I called it sea foam earlier. We are doing sea salt. I'm really, I'm really excited to try this. One of my friends tried it recently, so I'm also going to go put on painting clothes because I like the shirt. Be right back. All right, y'all. So as you can see, we've started. I actually filmed a whole intro for today and then didn't realize I was in time-lapse mode. Put a little clip here for you. So we're going to re-intro today. Yesterday with daylight savings time, the sun went down super early. So we did not get a first coat up yesterday, but as you can see, we are doing it today. Mom is cutting in. We've cut in this whole wall and now I'm going to load up the roller and we're going to give that a try. I'm really excited to see how it does. Um, so far we're really liking the color. Keep in mind that even when using a big roller like this, you do need to cut in what I was saying before, time lapse Betsy, <laughs> is that when you're cutting in, you cut in this way not this way. Keeps everything nice and tight and you get a much straighter line and you have a lot more control. You also missed the side-by-side um, -side comparison of my brush and mom's brush. Oh, because I dip my brush, as you can see, halfway up the tines and mom brushes her brush like a crazy person. Right, you bet your so keep your brush nice. They last longer. They're expensive. Uh, okay, Betsy buys them. Yeah, Betsy buys them, exactly. So maybe they'll invent a little easy brush and we won't need them anymore. We're going to go ahead and load this baby up and we're going to try it out. So. I think I need another ladder. Yeah, the other ladder, the taller ladder. Yeah, it's a little bit too tall. We have so many doors, four doors and three windows in this room. So it is just trim for days. And we shed this room with so much wear and tear. Yes, so that was the other thing I said was that um, this paint is really good quality. And I think this brush is gonna put it on. I mean, that's the whole goal, right? 
This roller is going to put it on really evenly. So one coat will probably cover all of the stuff. Like it will probably look really good with one coat. And if this was, say, a craft room or a decorative room, an office, something that you maybe didn't use super often, one coat would probably be fine. This living room. is the living room. It is mom's most used room in the house, even more than the kitchen, because she she's at an age where it's just her. Kids all live somewhere else. She doesn't cook like she used to. So this is the room in the house that gets all the wear and tear. And so you're going to do two coats so that this doesn't just look good, but that it lasts properly. And the best way to do that is to have good paint and even coverage. So this baby should be the kicker there. So tell them the color. I tell them the color mom. Yes, but in case you missed it, I did put it on the screen earlier, I believe, at least that's my plan. But it is sea salt. We are going to go ahead. So big end of the tube, clip on the side of the can here. It's going to go ahead and do it on the back of the can. I always like to leave the front of my can as clean as possible so that if I need to read the information later on, I can. Hey, Mom, can you actually come take pictures of me show on this part? Yeah. Okay. I'll finish this part right, right. here. We're going to wait two seconds so Mom can get some really good pictures for the blog post. All right, y'all. So now we're going to fill this up. It is clipped, and when you clip it in here, I've noticed that there is a little bar that sits right under here that clips not only on the outside of the can, but it fits under the lid lip inside the can. So make sure that you clip it under the lip inside, under the lip outside, and I think that is what is going to hold this in the can, that yeah. way when you're pulling this up, okay. you don't pull this out and tip paint okay. everywhere. I'm also gonna recommend that you kind of get down here, at least with a very full can, and you're very hands-on with it, because this is a very full can, and the suction here is very tight. And that's good, that's what keeps it from dripping out of here when you're not filling it up, but Tight mean it could easily tip your can over. So just make sure you're careful. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to try it for the first time. So I'm going to fit it on. Go all the way down. And then we're going to pull the plumbing back. And this was a little hard to do. But we're doing it for real. It's working. There's definitely a little air right here, but just a little bit. That's, I mean, most syringes and things are like that. All right, most of the air went away at the end. I do think it's under this part just a little bit, but still. All right, so now I'm going to actually get down here and I'm going to hold the clip and I pull it off. Perfect. Cool. You can see it does have paint on the top here. I don't really see any paint here. So, I mean, the suction worked. So now it says you pump this a few times and it's going to, I'm thinking, it. You know, pump it up through here and inside, and then once it's on here, we can start rolling it. I'm going to send it over the cardboard. Good plan, Sam. Since I'm still the novice. I also wanted to point out real quick that it filled this whole tube with about this much paint out of the can. So we still have quite a bit, quite a bit of paint. This is supposed to do an eight by 10 wall. So theoretically, almost that entire wall. So probably this entire wall, maybe that entire wall as well, since we have such few actual wall parts <laughs> to paint on these two walls, but we'll see. This much paint, supposed to do eight by 10. We'll see how far it goes. I'm not 100% sure when you know when to start, but I'm hearing it. Maybe I should hold it down. 
Like gravity is good, right? Yeah. Let's roll it up a time or two just to see. Not there yet. It's got to show. It might take a little more paint to well, fill up the roller brush. It has to fill it up the first time. Yeah, it has to fill up the, the paint brush part. There we go. Yeah, it's that. starting to come out. Yeah, oh, I see. Yeah, okay. cool. All Obviously, right. we need more for even coverage. I mean, you may have to fill it up again. I think I'm going to have to fill it up a second time to get started. We really start rolling. That's okay. Oh, that's doing good now. Do you have to continue to pump it as you paint? Um, I don't think as you paint, but I think for a while I'm going to have to pump it. I think the suction in the thing. Essentially, the pumping is the same as every time you have to go back for a dip in your tray almost. So I think once this is really coated, you might have to do it once or twice a roll. But at the beginning, you're going to have to do it a while because you're not getting that initial first really good roll that you would get to cover your yeah. roller That's good to know. paint. That's good to know. Cool. It's pretty good. It's a lot harder with this chair again. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, that's just a problem we're going to have. Yeah, because you usually like to go all the way down, don't you? Well, I will, but I'm not going to be able to with this chair. Oh, there you go. Let me take a close up of the paint on the roller. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to I'm gonna fill this up again because as you can see we've used three fourths of it just to get it into the roller. So this will be a better test. This will be a better test of how far it really goes once we fill it all the way up. okay to use if you're holding it with this, I think, but do not rely on this alone. Make sure when you paint, you're always going, overlapping yourself. That way you get full coverage all the way across. So when I do the next line, I'm not going to go here and start we're going to go halfway, and that way you know you're getting full coverage all the way across. Actually, I mean, you definitely have to roll quite a bit, but it works well. Keep guessing. It's a very good arm workout. <laughs> also guessing I will get better at it as I go. I also always prefer 
to roll all the way from the floor to the ceiling. It's just really hard with this chair in the way. For now, it's working really well. We will uh, reevaluate once we've used it for a little while. So, are you going to start going fast now? Yes. So, I'm going to go ahead and set you all the time lapse so you don't have to listen to the entire evaluation. And then I will stop it and we'll tell you more about it once I've used it for a while. All right, y'all, so I did this whole section. You can see it did a really even job and definitely no drips. I've used almost the entire tube though for this part, I'm gonna have to refill it. So I don't know if that's because I'm still learning and I'm pumping it too much or what, but or maybe this equals eight by 10, I don't know. Here's mom. She has been cutting in like a mad fool. like a mad fool. She's almost got all the way around the windows, so I've got to catch up now that I'm doing the flat parts. All right, there you go. <laughs> all right I'm going to move the camera so that y'all can see over on the right side of the room, and we are going to keep going. Okay, so... Up above mom's head is the second piece of molding that we were talking about. So we went and bought, it's not quite as wide as the top molding, but it's, it's what, skinnier molding? Yeah, a little skinnier. It's a little skinnier. Uh, last night, mom calculated how much we needed for each wall. We bought nine eight foot pieces and tell them about the eight foot problem. Oh, everything was either 10 foot or 7 foot. So if you're buying molding, keep that in mind. Some some was 8. But we was, found 3 or 4 maybe that far. were 8, but most were 7 or 10. If we had had the trailer. We could have got the 10. Up, we could have got the 10, but we just had Betsy's little car. So. Yeah. I, not I, a big, small car. drive an SUV, but she calls it a little car. Yeah. Anyways, so. this is what it's going to look like kind of. So we're going to paint in between the two parts white and then with we'll the trim with the trim and then we'll put the the molding up level about three-ish inches below the top molding this was just a mock-up to show us we wanted to see if we liked this particular molding or if we, we needed do. to switch it but we do so we're going to take it and down just a little beefier little beefier molding to go with the cornice boards and you can see them the bottom molding now like it's, it's so like beefy on the bottom yeah, it's 10 feet high, Mom. 10 feet, at least. All Ten right. Inches, you going to take that mock-up piece down? Yeah, I, I need you to come take this paint can down. Here, just float in the air. Yeah, floating. Woo, floating. All right. That's going to be a project for another day. Saturday. Yeah, probably. Uh, I was not planning to do this on Saturday, but I need to take pictures of this room with the pretty new paint, and it will be so pretty. And it looks a little funny with it not going all the way to this, the top molding, huh? <laughs> all right, so let's also talk about this real quick. So I refilled it um, three times all together. You saw the first one, almost the entire row went into filling this for the first time. I filled it twice since then, um, and I've done all the way corner to corner. Now these are the two walls with the most openings. This wall and that wall have one drawer each, so we will see how far it goes. I am definitely noticing it's going further, and I'm having to squeeze the handle less now that the roller is really saturated as opposed to on the first wall when it wasn't saturated that much. I also have noticed that even though it does not drip and it is very no mess, it is still a roller, which means it's leaving splatter marks on the floor. Since we didn't put down plastic, that is maybe not becoming a problem, but it's, it's just something now we have to clean up. So we did move 
the cardboard piece over here to stop the splatter from going on the floor. Two big walls. Yeah. But so far, I mean, you can see the splatter on here. So that's what's going on the floor. Um, but it's covering really evenly. It's really easy to use. I did try to stand on the stub butter. If all the furniture wasn't in the middle, we'd have those problems. But so far, I'm liking it a lot. So we're going to keep going. It'll be interesting when we're done to clean this baby out. See how that goes. I also assume that I could just put a standard paint mat on this for if I wanted to switch colors or something, you'd have to clean it out. Otherwise the wrong color paint would be inside. But I'm just saying like this paint nap, as nice as it is, it is will not last me forever. I will have to put a different paint nap on it eventually. And I'm assuming a standard size one will fit this, but I do want to test that because curious. So keep that in mind. Also, I did notice that once it was fully saturated, it didn't matter as much, but since the paint travels up here through this handle and reaches this side first, for the first half of the wall, this side of the paint nap was obviously much more saturated, working a lot harder than this side. It took a while before they were evenly working. Um, and that's why you overlap your paint strokes, so it's fine either way, but keep that in mind. All right, I'm gonna fill it up. So this is draw number four. I never miss 15 by 18. 15 by 18. With the bay window. This was a brand new gallon of paint when I started, and I would say draw number four took we're about halfway. We might be a, a smidge under halfway. It's hard to say. Um, but about half a can of paint for four draws. And my ceilings are nine feet high. And the ceilings are nine feet high. So one gallon will definitely do this room once. We have a gallon and a half. Let's see how far that goes. Hopefully this one draw will do at least this wall. If I have to do another four draws to get through the other half of the walls, we might be in trouble. You put it on fast now? Yeah, I'm gonna put it on fast now. see the whole room is done with one coat of paint mom has started cutting in this wall for the second coat we went and ate lunch so we're fueled and fortified and ready to do a second coat the sun will start going down soon so not gonna be super late in here for y'all but we're gonna get a second coat on that way we can finish finish um, so far though, it definitely took three full tubes to do this wall and this wall. That's a 15 foot wall and 18 feet one? 17. 17. So there you go. We are this close to the end of the first gallon of paint. And then we have about half a gallon left on the other gallon. So we will see, obviously we're doing the second coat takes less paint and the roller nap is already saturated. That takes less paint, but still half a gallon versus a full gallon. We may or may not get all of this done without getting more paint, but we are going to see how far we can stretch it because who wants to buy a whole third gallon when you need like a quarter gallon? So the quart, that would be a quart. We can always buy a quart. Anyways, we're going to get started and we're going to go. A couple tips. I did set this down when we went to eat lunch. Um, I didn't want to set it down. I will put a picture here of what happened. I didn't want to set it down horizontally, which would have been best because I was afraid of putting um, the nap flat on something and getting paint all over it and then the nap not being ready to go for coat two. 
So I put it on the couch. Now the couch, let it be horizontally, and I left the nap over kind of the, the seat of the couch. So it was in the air like this, but on the couch. And therefore the nap was good, it was horizontal. But if possible, you need to do that with this part up, because I left it gravity with this part down and it fell over. Now that's why we have the covers on everything, but still would have preferred to not do that. So there you go. Learn something new every day, twice on Sunday. Today is Thursday? I don't think we know. I think it's Thursday. Yes, it is, because Wednesday walkthrough is yesterday. <laughs> Tell them what the Wednesday walkthrough is. Oh my gosh, Wednesday walkthrough is our favorite antique store. And he does a walkthrough of his store on Enterprise, Wednesday. Alabama. You can find him on Facebook. And oh my gosh, he is great. He Justin at the estate sales store in Enterprise, Alabama. And he is he is so southern. So southern. And he will be like, hey y'all. I love it. I I'm love selling it. selling these scissors and they're just they're so cute. We just love them so much. Oh my god, y'all have to have these. Oh. He is the sweetest thing. Yep. And mom likes to watch. He does it on Facebook Live every Wednesday. He does a walkthrough of his estate sales store where he sells antiques and other goodies. And you can buy things on Facebook. And then you go pick them up at Enterprise, which is the next town over from us. And mom has bought a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. I love it. She I love it. it. <laughs> so there you go. There's a there's a tip for you. Betsy was dragging me away. Yeah, I said we have to go paint. Wednesday walkthrough. We don't have time for the Wednesday walkthrough. We have painting to do. I'm like, no, no. That's when we were taping, not painting yesterday. All right, we're gonna go on. Uh, fast, forward. fast forward. All right, y'all, so we are done. I will do the full reveal um, when we do the tape pulling F, which will be not tonight because it's still drying and it's dark. So maybe tomorrow morning, maybe Saturday morning. Not tonight. Tonight we're gonna, well, I'm gonna go home. I don't know what mom's gonna do, so. All right, so we need to clean this out, and I have a general idea of how that will probably work, but I pulled out the instructions because I learned a long time ago that it's best to clean these things the way you need to. All right, so clean up. Page four. If you used water-based material, use warm, soapy water. That makes sense. If you used oil-based materials, use mineral spray. That's a general rule of thumb. So this is water-based. We need oil, oil. We need water, water and soap. So we're gonna need a bucket or container to hold the water and a clean solution. So basically we could use like Dawn dish soap would be good. Um, it says a large laundry tub filled with warm soapy water is ideal if you use water-based materials. Makes sense. Don't know that I have a laundry bucket, but I'm sure I have some kind of bucket. I'll have to go look. All right, clean up one through nine. Pull plunger back, draw the remaining material from roller arm assembly into the tube. Press the fill valve on the tube, push plunger forward to return X material. I cannot talk, I'm sorry y'all, I'm very tired. Excess material into the container. So I've already done that, I went in the kitchen, I don't wanna drip anything. So essentially, we pull this plunger all the way back to pull any excess material out of here and in here. And then I just inserted the little straw right in here, held it over the paint can um, and pushed the plunger all the way in and it just pushed all the paint into the paint can that we're going to keep. 
and emptied this out because I still had like this much paint left. All right, so that was step one. I don't know why I moved this. I finally had it resting properly. All right, number three, pull the roller cover assembly from the roller arm. So that's the roller nap. It says take that off. It just says, do not tap the inner cap as it can be damaged, but you can lightly tap the outer edges to dislodge it. So there you go. It even has a little picture. Apparently there's a, can you see this? There's the roller nap. There's an inner kind of roller and then there's the metal part. It's dark, I know. So basically once we take that off, it's telling you essentially a million steps to take the spacer outside of the roller cover. So the inside part, the roller nap, the inside cover. We need all of those separate. Then we're gonna put our little straw in a bucket of water and we're gonna pull the plunger in and out. So we're gonna suck water up into and out of all of this parts, clean the inside tubing. And then yeah, clean everything else by hand, it says. Then at the very end, it says to clean the fill valve, which is this part. It says to take it all apart. There's four pieces, this, the outside um, yellow part that screws on, and then two inside inner parts. You want to take them all apart, clean them all with paint, and then reattach them. I think that's all of it. So essentially, we're going to go do it, but it sounds like four steps. Take this off, and you'll have the outside part, the end caps, the inside part, and the two. Clean that. Make sure you clean inside, so use that little straw, push water in and out, and then clean the fill nozzle. So we're going to go do that, and then hopefully then I can take a shower. Clean yourself. All right. We're in mom's kitchen. So we got our little straw tube. We got our bucket. I'm going to start by trying to take the roller nap off without making a huge mess. So it's been five seconds. Everything is already covered in paint. Which is fine, like we're still gonna use it. But first we're just gonna try to get some of this paint out so it's not so painty. part, the silicone part where it goes into the paint and nap, and that was um, dried, and it, it had said that there was some paint there, and you could tap on it, I guess, to clear it. I guess I decided to soak it off. <laughs> it's okay. We're learning. There was the paint that was dried around it. Right, so there should still be an inner part to this and an outer part that we got to get apart and cleaned. Supposed to, but that came right out, and it's one of the end caps, so 
Here's the inside part it showed. Killing it, guys. We're figuring it out. Also getting our bucket water dirty. We're going to start over when I could have just moved it. So the way this is constructed, I don't, I don't believe a standard uh, roller mat would ever fit on this, but I could be wrong. I'm going to have to research it. I'll let you know. Need my straw. I'm gonna clean the inside part. this end here and it is because there's nothing to stop it. it needs to oh, let's do it on this side it needs to um spell any paint that's left in those inner workings as well so suck up the water push it out that's good because we're pretty much out of water at that point. Alright, it said to do that no less than five times, so yeah, let's take one, let's do it some more. I feel like the inside of this is clean now. I'm going to go ahead and take this all apart. And it said there should be one. Let's see. Two. rubber valve in here for the straw, so make sure you clean all the way through there. Alright, and so with this plunger all the way in, now if I'm running water in here, it's coming out here, and it's clear, so it's clean inside. And I think, could be wrong, but I think that this isn't clear. Clean that some more. If you're ever not sure if something's clear, I just kind of set it on something like this easy clean counter. Let it drain for a minute. It's not clear, it'll let you know. A 
Okay, so this is the valve and there are one, two, three, four pieces. This part B is what we're missing. There's, there's not this cross part. And I do remember seeing that this morning and then this afternoon going, hey, that little crossy part is gone. So at some point today, that, that disappeared. And if that's important, I don't have it anymore. I have to ask Wagner about that. But it also does say, clean these parts. Do not allow these parts to soak as they could swell and not seal properly. So I'm glad I didn't let that soak. But other than that, everything is clean. Um, it does say to let everything thoroughly dry before we put it back together. So I'm gonna finish cleaning this and then, and then I think we're done for the day. So I'll be back tomorrow. We'll take the tape off and finish the So we are done with phase one, which was painting the walls. I hope you liked this video. That little easy paint stick was actually amazing. So final review, I really liked it. Cleaning it out took a bit longer than I was expecting, but that makes sense because the paint is going through the stick. You have to clean out all of those mechanisms. And now that I know how to do it, I do think cleaning it out next time will be much faster. Um, either way, it made the walls very smooth, very even. I loved not having to use a paint tray and track that all around, especially with animals. <laughs> I painted at a house once, well, I think my second house, and tried my best to keep the cat out of the bedroom where we were painting, but halfway through painting, husband let the cat in, he ran through the paint, tracked paint down my carpeted hallway, through the office, through the kitchen, I found him sitting with his little paint paws on my kitchen table. So not having a paint tray, even with all the animals locked out of the house was a blessing. I really liked it. Definitely just takes a little getting used to. I did not expect to have to push so much paint the first time to get the roller evenly saturated, but it makes sense. You're not getting that first good, really good dip um, out of the paint tray. So you do have to really supplement that instead. Again, these are all things that now that I'm used to it, it can be much easier next time. Overall, it made the room look fantastic and we painted the whole room two coats of paint in five hours for the lunch break. So I'm very happy with it. Obviously you can see we finished the trim, so I will leave a link to that video below. Um, but with the paint and the trim, it looks fabulous. We are going to be doing the fireplace next. So stay tuned for the final reveal. Um, and maybe one day when we don't have the puppies running around like crazy, we'll even get the rug back in here. But for now, mom is very happy with the way the room turned out. And I'm excited that it's finished and it looks really good. This was 10 years in the making. I'll leave a little before picture. So before, after. Hope you guys liked it. I will see you in the next video. Bye.